Dear Governor uh, and cabinet members, I'm glad you're here uh, tonight. I truly appreciate it. And, and for you, uh, Governor, I really give you uh, incredible um, commendation and respect for dealing with very, very difficult issues and taking them head on. My name is Lee Miles. I'm the CEO of St. Mary's Health System. Um, we are working with the department in terms of what you're, you just mentioned, in terms of managing the population using our emergency department. I think it has great promise, um, and it's something that we all have to do. My concern tonight uh, regards two things. And I guess they're questions and comments. Um, and my concern about the proposed cuts is this. I understand that there's a budget issue, and you're dealing with it, you're dealing with it very effectively. My concern is it's not just a fiscal issue. As you've alluded to a couple of times, this also is a moral issue. It's, it's going to take moral <laughs> to deal with those that are disenfranchised. I understand some of the history, certainly the, the, inequity, uh, the inequities in terms of people coming from other states. You're absolutely right, there are problems with the system. But we can't do a broad brush approach and suggest that people that are on Medicare shouldn't be there. I see them every day, whether it's mental illness, whether it's dental disease, whether it's other medical issues, and they're going to continue to come into the emergency departments at hospitals. Your incremental approach that, that uh, Mary is working with is right on, and it's going to work. But the proposed cuts to deal with a very real issue, in my opinion, are a new approach versus a thoughtful incremental approach, also recognizing that within 24 months, we are going to have health reform, which is going to require greater access and resources to take care of these same people. I'm concerned about the budget issue, but I'm also concerned about those people that will have no coverage, that will continue to come into hospitals. In addition, I'm also concerned about the financial impact. In the Lewis and Harvard area, the two hospitals have the highest percentages of main care in the state. It's a problem. You know that, we're working on that issue, but it is a problem. The impact of the proposed cuts to St. Mary's in 2012 is six million dollars. Our whole bottom line is only two million dollars. That means severe changes in our programs for those that are in need. So my suggestion is, one, do we know what the impact is on the local economy and what the cuts will do? And also, do we have a more thoughtful approach so that we can make sure that the cuts that are needed are sustainable and that it's not just a turping or a cost shifting to the hospitals that once again are being shortchanged in terms of reimbursement and the dollars that are owed, which I will say publicly, you are a champion of. You are going to get us the, the money that is owed and you're working on it very, very hard. And I appreciate that. But that's an issue. The second, the second point, just to raise it because it may be related, is the fact that hospitals at this time, the economy is poor. You didn't create the DHS crisis, nor did the Democrats or Republicans. We have an economy issue that needs more revenue to solve these issues. Right now, your administration is holding up the ability to go out to the bond market. And I understand that's the issue of moral obligation on the part of the citizens. I understand and respect that. The problem is there are projects that the universities have or hospitals that will create jobs now in this economy. And we have to be able to deal with that. What I did, what I did, uh, the budget that I propose right now, last February, we made a proposal to the legislature that would have fixed much of our structural problems, would not have affected assisted living. We want, we want to, we need to reduce the eligibility from 200% down to 133. The rest of the nation works at 133. The proposal that I have now is simply not trying to cut anything. I'm just trying to get through the year so I don't have to close nursing homes. Right now, we're writing out of budget. My only alternative right now is before I close up the nursing home, I won't be paying the hospitals. You know, I, that's that's the this is not a cutting proposal. 
What the, the proposal I made to structurally fix welfare was last February. It was totally ignored. Everybody went back and took all the money that we were going to save and fix the problem and threw it back in. And now we spent that money. We spent that money and currently we are spending fourth quarter money and we're in the third quarter. Come April 1, the checkbook will be empty. Now, I am appropriated so much money. It's not me at this point that needs, I'm telling the legislature, on April 1, if you don't do something, I'm out of money. And I will be closing not only what I proposed, what I proposed is to cut things that so that I can keep the nursing homes open, so I can keep some assisted living going, so I can keep the mental institutions open. If I do nothing on April 1, it's catastrophe for the state of Maine because we run out of money. And I'll go one step further. If they can modify it, and, and a lot of Democrats still think we're fooling around and we're making political hay here. Right now, in, in order to continue the way we are, I will close schools, May 1, and use that money. Because that's where we are. It's a matter of not having money. It's not a matter of policy. It's a matter of when you have $100 in your checkbook and you're spending $200, you've got a problem. just 
what I'm doing. It's what the federal government is also doing. They're giving us less and less reimbursements every month. They are cutting back. And, and, I, and I know that there are some that will say that when we've made this all up, either one of two things. They're, they're being dishonest to the main people, or they can't cut. Yeah. <laughs>